What's up guys, Muhammad Skaka here with another product feedback video and this is going to be a pretty intensive buyer's guide for everyone who's interested in purchasing a MacBook Pro or a MacBook Air or a MacBook Pro Retina or any of the MacBook laptop lineup. And considering I've owned pretty much nearly all of the laptops that they make, I thought this would be a pretty interesting and great video for everyone to benefit from. So make sure you hit that like button, subscribe and follow my social links. Let's get straight into this. Okay, let's talk about MacBook Air. Now the MacBook Air by Apple comes in two variations. One is the 11 inch and the other is the 13 inch. Now both of these machines are very portable and are going to provide you with an extremely long battery life, meaning you can plug it in, charge it up overnight and take it to work, school, uni, and use it for the entire day without the battery running out. It's got a battery life of about 10 hours. It's not crap, it's actually true. The machine does last that long, which is quite an amazing feat. Now the MacBook Air 11 inch, some people swear by it. Personally, I believe 11 inch is too small for a really productivity kind of machine. So if you just want something really portable to carry around with you all the time, maybe traveling and you're gonna book flights and this sort of stuff, the 11 inch is quite a nice option. But for most people, I reckon the 13 inch is that sweet spot. The reason why is I had the 13 inch. It was really comfortable to use laying back on a couch in my bed. But on the other hand, it was really easy to take with me to uni, to do my assignments on, to carry around with me and take it back home. It's not very heavy. It's quite a nice machine. The 13 inch screen is large enough to do quite a few things on and I believe it's kind of to be the better choice of the 11 and 13 inch. Now the decision that's going to put everyone off is whether they get the 13 inch Air or the brand new release MacBook Pro 13 inch with Retina. Now before we talk about the Retina, we'll just quickly cover the 13 inch Pro which doesn't have the Retina to screen. Don't buy it, buy the 13 inch Air, you're gonna be much better off. The performance is very similar. You're going to get a much lighter weight machine, much more portable and you're gonna be much satisfied with that sort of purchase. The 13 inch MacBook Pro Retina, don't we all love high resolutions and don't we all love really intensive pixels? Now personally, I love pixels and the more information I can fit on the screen, the better because the more productivity I can produce. I can have multiple things on one side of the screen, multiple things on the other side of the screen. However, a lot of people I don't think will really benefit that much from that retina display. I think most people will be more satisfied with the Air because the Air is actually still quite a lot thinner and quite a lot lighter than the MacBook Pro Retina. Not only that, but I actually noticed that the Pros tend to get quite warm. So if you place it on your lap during summer, you're going to notice the heat. The MacBook Air seems to dissipate the heat much better and overall provide you with a better experience. So if you really, really, really need a 13 inch retina display, buy it. But ultimately, if you don't really need that retina, I'm going to be more inclined to recommend the Air in the 13 inch form factor to be the better option. What about the 15 inch Pro Retina? So we're talking about the higher end gear. Now personally, this is my own machine. I use a 15 inch Pro Retina display and I have, like I said, used the Air. I have used the 13 inch Pro and I have used now the Retina display. Now the 15 inch Retina Pro is definitely targeted for people who want a higher performance machine. Now the Air was great. I could do everything I wanted to do on it. I could be surfing the net, multiple web pages, multiple assignments multiple photos, video editing, everything like this. But when it came to real grunts, so say running even StarCraft 2, the MacBook Air just psh, could not handle it. So I decided to go for the MacBook Pro 15 inch Retina because I needed that extra performance. I wanted that 15 inch high resolution screen. I wanted the extra bump with the i7 processor. I wanted the better performance from the graphics card. I needed those things for my own personal use, which includes video editing, gaming, and a little bit more high performance things than what, than what most people need. Now it is a lot more expensive. You're gonna be paying like two and a half grand for this machine. So it's not something you likely wanna consider. And like I said, I still believe that 13 inch Air is kind of my favorite out of all the machines. And it is quite, thinner and I'll get to that in a second because I'll show you guys exactly the difference between the two machines and you can see for yourself if there's a massive difference. We've already established that there's going to be a slight difference between the MacBook Air 13 inch and the 15 inch MacBook Pro Retina. What are those differences? Well we're going to take a closer look now and just see exactly how they compare in terms of physical and in usability standpoints. So the MacBook Pro 15 inch Retina and the MacBook Pro 13 inch are still very similar looking machines. However, the 
13 inch Air does feel a lot lighter to carry around with, a little bit more comfortable. That smaller size just makes that portability just that much better. And I kind of prefer the MacBook Air for that sort of setup. Now the air does taper off to this more thinner edge which does mean it doesn't cut into your palms when you're actually using it and the 15 inch MacBook Pro does. Now keyboard size is about the same as you can see here. The speakers are actually under the keyboard on the air where the retina are separated on the sides but the glass trackpad and the keyboards are the same on both machines. The LCD screens are about the same thickness but I do have to say that the Air does have the same thickness in terms of the end portion in comparison to the 15 inch Retina. Now the Retina does have a HDMI out which is to be considered if you do need the external use, otherwise you're going to have to be using a Thunderport adapter. As well as like I said the speakers on the 15 inch Retina seem to produce a much louder sound and to be quite honest are my preference in terms of sound quality. The, the screen obviously is a major difference as you can see here. It's hard to match a retina display. It is a really, really high resolution screen and the clarity is much better than the air. However, it's only if you've used one before. It's hard to go back to another screen, but if you haven't used a retina display before, you're not gonna be felt out of place on the MacBook Air. Whether you go for either, both are good choices, but that's kind of just a close look at the physical, physical differences between both machines. I didn't really want to talk about price too much in this video because I know everyone's on different budgets and obviously that's going to kind of conflict with what decision you're going to make. Personally, I always believe in best value for money and I really can't stress how the MacBook Air 13 inch is a really good value for money machine. It's going to give you very long battery life, very good performance for pretty much everything you need to use it for except games, but you can still do photo editing and video editing without the machine lagging up only if you don't have a lot of things open at the same time. So if you believe you're that sort of person that just wants a really nice machine, don't doubt it, it's actually a great laptop. And that thinness of the, the, the curvature of the MacBook Air, so the bit where it comes down towards is much more comfortable holding the palms. What I notice is with the 13 inch Pros and the 15 inch MacBook Pro, now when you rest your hands on it, you actually will get a little bit like a, a cutting into your, your palm. So the Air has got a much more ergonomic form factor which I'd be more inclined to recommend. Well, that's kind of been my buyer's guide and I hope I've given you guys some insight into which MacBook Pro will suit you the best. Personally, like I said, I use the Retina Pro 15 inch, but if I had a choice and I didn't need to use that, that extra performance it gives me, the 13 inch Air would be my choice. Obviously, that's my opinion, you can decide. And if you enjoyed this video, please make sure to follow all my social links because I regularly, regularly update all those sites. And this is me, Muhammad, with Product Feedback, and I'll see you guys in another video. Peace be with you.